New discovery for your whole family wash. Tide's in. Dirt's out. Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap. Any soap? Yes, any soap. Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap. T-I-D-E. Tide. Yes, it's the Red Skelton program with David Rose and his orchestra, the Four Knights, Verna Felton, Lorene Tuttle, Pat McGee, and yours, Billy Rod O'Connor. They say curiosity killed a cat. Well, I don't know about that, but it certainly can cause trouble for human beings. For instance, here's what happened to MGM's favorite comedian, Red Skelton. Uh, this Rod O'Connor's right there? Yeah, he's here, but he's doing his spring cleaning in the den. <laughs> I'll be right over. This I gotta see. Do, 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 Mr. Skelton? Yes, do, Rod do, O'Connor do. called. My, this den sure is a man. Yeah, but you know, it's a lot of fun to do spring cleaning. You always run across things that's been missing for years. <laughs> I pulled down the window by and found a pair of pants I've been pressing for three years. <laughs> You clean the television screen, too. Yeah, boy, but what a job. It took me three hours. Every time I got the thing wiped off, hop along Cassidy would ride by and get it all dusty again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a lot of fun, though. What got under you all of a sudden to make you want to clean your den? What got under me all of a sudden? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it was about time to clean up this place. Yesterday, the dog next door came in and buried a bone over in the corner there. <laughs> oh, Mr. Skelton, you sure are a card. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You should hire someone to do this cleaning I got news for you, you're supposed to be doing it No, sir I only do lighthouse work I know, and this is no lighthouse Besides, <laughs> this was supposed to be my day off Well, I know, but you took yesterday off instead You said you were going to a funeral I was, but I couldn't find any good ones to go to <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll let you get back to your cleaning Oh Oh, here's a morning paper. Did you see this? What is it? What is it? A man has been sealed in a room for ten years. Well, all the dirty things. What some people won't do to miss my program. <laughs> is this his picture? Oh, look at that guy, will you? Well, little by little, those Republicans will be found. <laughs> Dress? Well, sure. If I hadn't paid taxes for ten years, I could dress like that, too. <laughs> oh, someone's at the back door. I'll go see who it okay. is. Well, howdy, Twain. Well, howdy, do <laughs> Well, Mm -hmm. Aren't you still working at the bakery? Yeah, I got promoted to the assistant uh, uh, chrome inspector. <laughs> and I was looking at them crumbs and, well, it reminded me I hadn't seen you in 12 hours. Why, you overwrite nobody. Mm -hmm. Tell me, didn't Mother Nature give you any brains at all? Yep, yep, she did. But I sure wish you'd have given me something I could use. <laughs> go down in history as a stumble in the march of time. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. Some people think I'm important. Just got a new job this morning. Steam fitter. A what? Steam fitter. Steam fitter. It's very tedious work, you know. <laughs> that's your, you know, that, that steam's very hot. And it, it burns your hands. You know, it's hard to handle, you know. Right. Well, I don't know, but I'll think of something. <laughs> Steam fitters are fast that way, you know. What is a steam fitter? Mm hmm? Your mind is wandering. It won't go far, I'll say. <laughs> I said, what is a steam fitter? Well, a steam fitter is, um, a uh, steam fitter is, uh, well, you take two pieces of steam and you fit them together. <laughs> I'll never do that again, I'll say. To do, get lost. Hmm? Top a walk. Go crawl up the rain spout, you drip. Uh, well, now, why don't you just tell me to leave and stop beating around the bush? <laughs> After all, I get those hints broad, uh, those broad hints. <laughs> <laughs> there are other fish 
in the sea. And you're just the worm to catch them. Well, that does it. I'm walking out of here and out of your life forever. Well, don't walk that way. There are a lot of gopher holes in the yard. I'll walk anywhere. I want to. Oh, oh, he fell. Oh. <laughs> oh. Clay, am I all right? Oh, my goodness. Oh. Clay, am I all right? Mm. Speak to me. Don't just look at me with those big, sad eyes. I'm sorry. Here, I'll kiss you and make you feel better. <laughs> There, how was that? It sounds pretty good. I hope that gopher enjoyed it. I'm over here. <laughs> I might as well face it. I need glasses. So do I with beer in them. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's at the door. I'll get it. I'll get it. Hi, Red. Hi, Rod. Come on in. Uh, what are you doing with an apron on? Cleaning house? No, I found it. I didn't have no place to put it, so I just tied it around me. <laughs> hey, you just showed up in time. Come on. You can help me carry this box of papers out to the insinuator to burn. Okay. <laughs> incinerator to burn. <laughs> hey, uh, huh? there's that grumpy neighbor of yours. Oh, yeah. You mean Mrs. Fussy? You know, I think I'm winning her over. Good morning, Mrs. Fussy. Well, aren't you the nosy one? <laughs> Since when is it any of your business how I am? Well, if you I... must know, I have indigestion. My feet are killing me, and I see specks in front of my eyes, and one of those specks is your head. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Who laughed how you were? <laughs> and since you brought up the subject, I have a complaint to make about the way you played your radio last night, Mr. Skelton. I didn't play my radio That's last night. That's what I'm complaining about. You didn't play your radio, and you didn't wake me up, and I didn't hear my husband sneak in. But, but oh, aren't you the mouthy one this morning? <laughs> and I'm glad you brought up the subject. What subject? About your dog. I didn't mention the dog. That's a weak excuse have I ever heard. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Last night I found one of your dog's fleas on my peak. <laughs> You know, the longer you think about that, the funnier it gets. <laughs> I'm sure my God won't miss it. Now, look, Mrs. Mr. Skelton, I don't have to listen to that kind of talk from you. Hmm? Oh, come on, Rod. Just where do you think you're going with that basket full of paper? I'm going out to burn them in my I-N-C-I-N. <laughs> Not until the wind shifts. I will not have the smoke from your incinerator polluting my backyard. Well, what do you want me to do? Teach the thing to inhale? <laughs> Aren't you the smarty one, though? Wait until I tell my husband Winston about you. Oh, if I could only get my hands on the real estate agent that sold you the house next to mine. I'm going <laughs> One of my dog's fleas on her peak? <laughs> Why, I don't see how she got so fat, you know. Her mouth doesn't stop flipping long enough to put food in it. I bet she could get a job in a fish store sitting in the window as a crab. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we better look through this waste paper basket before we burn this stuff. Last week I burned four pages of ad libs. <laughs> Hey, hey, you're not going to throw this away, are you? What is it? What is it? It's one of my commercials. Gee, do you realize what you're doing? What? Listen to this. Tide in, dirt outside gets cold cleaner than any soap. Any soap? Yes, any soap. And that's only the beginning, because Tide not only gets clothes cleaner than any soap, but cleaner than any other sud, cleaner than any other washing product known. Tide gets clothes cleaner than all of them. T-I-D-E, Tide. Yes, you can name any washing product known, and we still say Tide will get clothes cleaner. You see, Procter & Gamble's Tide does more than leave clothes free from dirt. It removes dingy soap film, too. Yet with all this amazing cleaning power, Tide is safe. Truly safe for all your washable colors. Yes, safe and more. Because colors actually brighten up when Tide washes away dingy soap film. And white things? In hardest water. Tide gets shirts, towels, sheets, 
whiter than any other washing product known. Yes, colors, whites, linens, work clothes, everything you wash gets the benefit of the promise that only Tide can make. No soap, no other suds, no other washing product known will get your clothes as clean as Tide. <laughs> Aren't you ashamed of yourself for wanting to burn that? Yeah, I guess I'm just getting careless. Gosh, and all the people to remind me of it. As the four knights would say, it had to be you. <laughs> it had to be you. It had to be you. I wandered around, finally found somebody who could make me be true or make me feel good. And even be glad, just to be sad, thinking of you. Some others I've seen might never be. Might never be cross, I try to be boss, but they wouldn't do. Nobody else gave me a thrill with all your faults, I love you still. It had to be you, wonderful you. It had to be you. It had to be you It had to be you I wandered around Finally found Somebody who Could make me be true Or make me feel Just to be sad, thinking of you. Some others I've seen might never be me. Would never be cross. I try to be boss, but they wouldn't do. Nobody else gave me a thrill with all your faults. I'd love you still. It had to be you, baby. Wonderful you. Coral Records, too. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Red, where are all these peop uh, papers you're burning? <laughs> oh, wait, you want to start again? <laughs> yeah, I'll try it again. Uh, hey, <laughs> hey, Red, where are all these papers we're burning? Well, they're jokes we didn't use on the program. Hey, get a load of this one, yeah. will you? There was a fellow standing at a bar drinking, see? Yeah. and he was holding his nose, and his buddy says, what's the matter, don't you like your stuff? He says, I smell it, it makes my mouth water, and I don't like it diluted. <laughs> <laughs> Burn it. Hey, burn look at it. this one. I dreamed I died and went to heaven. What woke you up? The heat. Burn it. <laughs> hey, look, here's a form letter. Form letter? Yeah, an ad for corsets. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that one might not burn. Our corn is a little green, you know. Hey, what's this, a love note? Hmm? Who's Fitzy? I don't know any Fitzy. What does it say? Dear Red, I am now at Wilshire and Elm. Stop in and see me. It's important. And it's signed Fitzy. Don't know her. Burn it. <laughs> but she says it's important. I don't know her. Burn it. Burn it up. Get the writer. Burn him, too. <laughs> Neither do I, but I'm interested. Well, look, the note might have been written years ago. Well, Fitzy sounds like someone who would wait. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like one of those girls you write a letter to, but in the safe way. My dear darling and ladies and gentlemen of the jury. <laughs> well, uh, why don't you go ask Georgia if she knows Fitzy? Are you kidding? Go in and ask Little Red a thing. I don't have that kind of insurance, Doc. <laughs> but you're innocent. You have nothing to hide. Let's put it this way. Let's go ask your wife if she knows Fitzy. I see your point. <laughs> hey, maybe, uh, maybe I should go see who she is, though. She might be part of my radio audience. Yeah, and remember, it's the little things that count. Huh? <laughs> I'm going to have to learn to write with a pencil. No, I'm kidding, Red. Yeah. Come on, you're wasting time fighting with suspense. Come on, I'll go with you. Well, suppose Georgie finds out. Well, who wears the pants in your family? What are you, a man or a mouse? Well, what do you think I am, a man or a mouse? <laughs> well, what do you think I am? Oh, come on, get down off that chair and tell me what do you think I am. <laughs> 
Come on, let's go. No, no, look. Let, I want to put you straight. I don't smoke, chew, drink, or run around. Oh, well, we all have to go sooner or later. <laughs> Come on, my car's down the street at Lippy's service station. No, I better not. I better not. Okay, I'll go. She's probably a nice little girl, young, beautiful, very discreet. <laughs> Wait, I'll get my hat and go with you. <laughs> okay. Pick me up at Swab's drugstore, will you? I want to go get the new Vogue magazine. I like to know in advance what George is going to scare me with later. All right. I'll go see if my car's ready. <laughs> Hey, Willie. Willie Lump Lump, is my car ready? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Look, if you're through greasing my car, will you let me have it? I'm through greasing the car, yeah. But I gotta get this dent out of the fender, then. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't a dent in my fender. You mean to tell me it got wrinkled like that, worrying about the payment? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I say, how did you dent it? Well, you see that gas pump over there? Yeah? Used to be over here. <laughs> Tell me something, will you? What? How did you ever get a job in a service station? You don't know how to grease a car, you don't know how to pump gas, you don't even know how to drive. Well, it just goes to prove that none of us are perfect. <laughs> how come you're working anyway? Isn't that a little out of your line? I'm only working for two weeks. See, this is my annual vacation from my unemployment compensation line. <laughs> you know what's wrong with you? What? You've been sampling too much of that tetraethyl. Well, at least my tonsils don't have a ping in them anymore. What's <laughs> <laughs> the ping? <laughs> well, I'm in a hurry. I'll just take Burn my it. car as is. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Say, would you mind wiping off my windshield? That's what I'm here for. I'll do anything you want to. That's part of our duty, you know. Wipe off the windshield. The windshield ain't dirty. Wipe off the hood. Wipe off the car. Wipe off all the windows. If there's nothing on the car to wipe, look inside. There might be a small boy with a nasty nose. <laughs> I've been wiping it for a minute now, and I still can't see out of it. You missed the spot here. Okay, I'll get it. I'll get it. Go in there and pick up the producer, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Is the spot still there? Yes, the spot's still there. Well, it is, huh? I'll bet you five bucks you can't show it to me now. <laughs> well, I hope your insurance company likes to be kept busy, because I'm going to put them to work. David Rose and the Tide Orchestra play Red Roses for a Blue Lady.
Bob Burns can really play a bazooka, can he? <laughs> hey, Rod, do you think we're doing the right thing by trying to find out who this Fitzy character is? Well, now, look, you just let me handle the whole affair. Uh, I'll start telling her something that'll make her forget all about you. Now, what will you tell her? I'll just tell her all about the new wash day miracle, Tide. Oh, that'll make her come clean, yeah. <laughs> I'll say, uh, look here, Fitzy. You know, there's an amazing number of really good wash day products in the market, which makes Tide all the more remarkable. Because Procter & Gamble's Tide gets clothes cleaner than the best of them. Cleaner than any soap. Cleaner than any other suds. Cleaner than any other washing product known. For Tide not only leaves clothes dirt-free, it removes dingy soap film, too. And yet with all this amazing cleaning power, Tide is truly safe for all your washable colors. In fact, Tide actually brightens those soap dull colors and white things in hardest water. Tide gets them whiter than any other washing product known. Yes, I said in hardest water. For Tide works its miracles in any kind of water, anywhere. You get oceans of suds that look and feel different. And you get a wash line that really opens your eyes. For no soap, no other suds, no other washing product known will get your clothes as clean as Tide. Well, now you can wipe the foam off your mouth, Sudsy, and let's get going, huh? Uh, hey, Red, isn't that Verna Felton walking down the street with all those groceries? Yeah, let's stop and give her a lift, huh? Oh, you're just trying to get out of meeting Fitzy. Hiya, Verna. Hey, hop in. We'll give you a ride home. Oh, that's sweet of you, Red. Hello, Moran. Oh, uh, hiya, Verna. <laughs> you, you all settled? Well, yes, but the front seat is sort of crowded. Mm. Uh, do you have enough room, Red? Oh, sure. Am I crowding you, Rod? No, but if my girdle pops, we'll all go through the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how come your, your grandson, Junior, is not with you, Verna? Oh, he's at home. If his handcuffs have held out. Well, here we go. Well, here's your house. Well, that's the fastest I've ever crossed the street. <laughs> Won't you come in, Red? No, thanks. I'm a little, I'm a little cramped here. I feel like I'm sitting on my own lap. Oh. <laughs> well, at least we were lucky it didn't pop. <laughs> uh, here, give me your packages and watch your step, Verna. Thank you. Uh, I'll be right out, Red. Oh, I don't. Oh, I don't think I brought my key with me, Junior. Junior. Hey, Junior. Well, Nemo, what'd you do, bring me one of them big balloons? Or is that a man? Oh, <laughs> Mr. O'Connor. Answer me question. What are you doing out of bed? I told you to take a nap. I did take a nap, but Mr. Fowler next door, he yelled so loud I couldn't get any sleep. Now, Mr. Fowler should be more considerate. Yeah, he should. Didn't he know you were in your room? Well, sure he knew. Them bags of water didn't fall on him by himself, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Just for that, you come here to me. No, no, you don't, kiddo. You don't, they don't get in. Junior, you open this door at once. If I open the door, what you gonna do to me? Why, nothing, dear. Nothing at all. Well, it might be nothing to you, but it's the pain in the back of my lap to me. Junior, <laughs> yeah. hmm? if you'll open the door, Nama has a surprise for you. Really? Oh, yes. Do yes. you like ice cream? Yes. Well, here's an advertisement of a new ice cream parlor that's just opening up. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Sporty. That's mighty nice of you. Didn't you bring me nothing sweet to well, eat? Now that I'm back, dear, I'll let you in on a little secret. Why? I hid the cookies in the oven. Yeah, let me in. Let you in on a secret, too. Uh, they ain't hid no more. <laughs> you found them. Well, let's put it this way. We was bound to meet sooner or later. <laughs> Junior, mm -hmm. is your grandfather home? Well, I think so. I answered the door a few minutes ago and something crawled by me. <laughs> Oh, it was probably an old stray dog. Well, if he was, he was a pretty smart dog because I distinctly heard him bark, Don't tell old Cold War I'm home. <laughs> you shouldn't talk about your grandfather like that in front of Mr. O'Connor. He's liable to get the wrong impression of him. Oh. Now, if you say one more thing, I'm going to spank you. Okay. Now, tell Mr. O'Connor you're sorry. Yeah. Well, how can I not say something and then tell him I'm sorry? <laughs> What's he going to do? Read my lips? <laughs> not, the whole family's nuts. <laughs> I understand, Vern. I have two children of my own just like it. Well, don't come crying to us about it. <laughs> I put these groceries in the kitchen. Junior, you entertain Mr. O'Connor. I'll be right back. Well, blubber boy, <laughs> here we is all alone and unprotected. 
Yes, I know. I'm just wondering how I can make a break for it. <laughs> would you like for me to entertain you, or would you rather pay me protection? <laughs> I'll pay. Here's a nickel. A nickel? I see you don't want full coverage, huh? <laughs> how much is full coverage? Well, I usually charge a dime. However, you use a pretty big hunk of coverage, you know. <laughs> I have to make it 15 cents. Oh, here you are. Who says? <laughs> Boy, ain't I the mail order Mickey Cohen. <laughs> Hmm? I caught you pulling that old protection policy gag on again. Oh, now, don't... Now, me. just for that, up to your room. Okay, Go okay. Room. Oh, but before I go, I got a dollar bill I took out of a pocketbook. Do you want it? No, you'll return it. Well, I tried to return it, but the lady said she don't want it. Oh, well, in that case, dear, you can keep it. Okay. Whose pocketbook did you take it from? Yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see you later, Vernon. Uh, do call again, Rod. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Hey, Fatso! Don't drop that on me. Bombs away! <laughs> oh, I missed him. I missed him. I missed him. <laughs> hey, Red, start the car. Let's get out of here. Well, here's the corner of Wilshire and Elm, Rod. I still don't see why you wanted to park the car a block away and walk up here. Well, it's better this way, you see. In case we have to run, we don't want a car to slow us down. You know? <laughs> hey, uh, look at the name on that store over there. Yeah, Fitzpatrick's Lamp Shop. Uh... Let's go ahead and find out if she's there. Okay, I'll follow you in. That way nobody will see me. <laughs> hey, here's a couple of lamps like Georgia saw in a magazine that she wanted. Look at the price on them things. Fifty bucks a piece. Can you imagine paying fifty dollars for lamps like that when candles are so cheap? <laughs> oh, here comes a guy now. Good afternoon, gentlemen. May I help you? Uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> is Fritzy in? <laughs> yes, I'm Fritz. I don't like you. <laughs> My, um, my real name is Phil Potts, but everybody calls me Fritzy. Oh, I see. Well, um, do you know anything about this note? Well, Kiddo? <laughs> Dear Red, first chance you get, meet me. Hmm, it's time. Fritzy, all right, but I didn't write it. You didn't? Oh, a red-headed lady came in and picked out some lamps and said that a red-headed man would pick them up. Georgia did this. Say, you must be Mr. Skelton. Yeah. Yes, your wife said I'd know you by your red hair, brown eyes, and the worried expression on your face. I've been framed. <laughs> the amount due is $160. Oh, no. If she thinks she can pull a trick like that on me to get her to buy her some lamps, she's got another guest coming. I don't care. I... You better Ooh. play it safe, Red. Better take those lamps. Maybe then she won't ask you to explain how you happen to be looking for a Fitzy that you didn't even know. Well, I'd... Wrap them up, will you? Wrap them up. <laughs> I'll pay for him. Excuse me. Oh, the loot. It's Patrick's lamp shop. Oh, yes, Mrs. Skelton. He's here. Uh-oh. It's for you, Mr. Skelton. Mm. Hello, Little Red. I see you found the note, Big Red. Yeah, honey. <laughs> what was the idea? I was going to buy you those lamps anyway. I was going to surprise you with them. Of course you were, Big yeah. Red. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not mad at me for playing a trick on you? <laughs> no, gosh, no, gosh. <laughs> And you're not sorting me for trailing Fitzy either, are you? Are you, Little Red? Little Red? Little Red? <laughs> hey, wrap up a couple more lamps, will you? For Big Red? <laughs> Thanks for being with us tonight. So on the next Friday... Let's go and say goodbye now. Thanks for listening and thanks for buying more and more of that voice during Miracle Tide. Tide is dirt. Our Tide gets close cleaner than any soap. T-I-D-E-I. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.